We've all seen huge power lines draped across the countryside, hanging from enormous towers and carrying a likely lethal dose of electricity inside. These power lines are thick and made of highly conductive material. They therefore have very little electrical resistance. Power distribution networks typically operate on the principle of alternating current. The conduction electrons within, shown in blue, saw back and forth, striking the positively charged ions, shown in pink. These ions begin vibrating. They are now said to have thermal energy. Small amounts of electrical energy, therefore, is converted to heat energy. This is the source of the electrical resistance in the wire. You'll notice that the electrons don't actually make much progress down the wire. They slide back and forth in place. You can imagine at one end of the wire, at the electrical power plant, the very first electrons are accelerated back and forth by a generator. The electrons in the wire are just reacting to that. We should note here that it is actually very difficult to simulate what the electrons actually look like in a wire. They likely have very high thermal velocities and very small back and forth velocities in comparison. They're also not particles, but instead something more easily described by quantum mechanics. So our model is very crude, but it gets some basic points across. The electrons oscillate back and forth, and they interact with the substance of the wire, dissipating energy. The electrical potential difference between two adjacent power lines is extremely high, measured in hundreds of thousands of volts, as we can see on the vertical axis of the graph at left. This voltage swings up and down, positive and negative, thanks to the oscillation of the electrons. As you can see, the horizontal axis is measured in milliseconds, which means this oscillation is very fast, much faster than we've shown here. The RMS, or root mean square voltage, is shown in dashed line. The RMS average is provided because it's more meaningful than the ordinary average, which for an oscillating value would be zero. Instead, we square the voltage, measure the average of a now positive function, and take the square root of that. This is a math trick, but it gives us a better sense of how much real energy is carried in the wires. The graph at right is a bit more subtle. It shows the electric potential drop along a single power line as you travel from one tower to the next tower. This voltage drop is tiny compared to the hundreds of thousands of volts of electric potential we are carrying in these wires. But they speak to the resistance of the wire itself. Since this is a plot of voltage drop versus current, the slope of this graph should give us a sense of the electrical resistance of this length of cable, as described by Ohm's law. By adjusting the cable thickness and the tower-to-tower -tower distance, you should be able to affect the electrical resistance of this segment of cable. Play around and see what you can discover.